Did you know the Bible is full of God's great and precious promises toward us, his most prized possession, his sons and daughters, humankind, the human race. God has promised to love us, promised to save us, promised to deliver us and bring us all back to him. Yes, he has promised this and he has swore this and he has made an oath. God himself has done this. And let's look at some of these great promises in the scriptures. I'm also going to lean on one of the writings of Dr. Stephen Jones entitled God's Promise to You, the Really Good News. And uh, Dr. Jones starts out here by asking a question. Did you know that God made a promise to you many years ago? His promise was made to everyone. So if you live on this earth, it applies to you. Long ago in the days of Noah, God made a covenant with the whole earth and everyone living on it. He bound himself by an oath not to allow the earth to be destroyed. And we find this in Genesis 9 uh, verses 15 through 17, and we'll read some here. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So there's a promise of God right there. He promised never to destroy the earth again with a total devastating flood. So there's one of the promises. Then when we look on in Deuteronomy chapter 29... Uh, a few centuries later, in the days of Moses, God made a similar vow to clarify what he meant. God took an oath to make us all his people and to be our God. And so in Deuteronomy 29, 14 through 15, basically it says, um, Now not with you alone am I making this covenant and this oath, but both with those who stand here with us today in the presence of, of the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here today. So we see the Israelites in that time, they witnessed this oath, but it was not given to them alone. God said it applied to the whole earth, those who are not with us here today. So we see this gets larger. God is talking about, I'm making a promise to establish a covenant with those who are with me here today, but not only you, but also those who are not with us today. As we go on and we look in Isaiah chapter 45, 45 verses 22, it says, look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath or every tongue shall swear. So that scripture tells us right there, God is talking to all the ends of the earth. He says, I'm God, there's no other. And he says, I am swearing by myself. The word goes out of my mouth. It's not going to return. Every knee is going to bow to me. Every tongue is going to confess to me. This is talking about all the ends of the earth. What a great promise. What a great oath. God has sworn to do this. And then when we look in Psalm 22, verse 27, it says, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. What a great promise. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. Many people read their Bibles over and over again. They don't even know scriptures like this 
are in there, when they read them, they just gloss over them or just pass by them or don't really pay any attention to it. But listen to it again. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. How are we going to remember something that we didn't come from to begin with? That would give us evidence that everything came from God, exists through God, and returns to God. Well, Paul told us that. Of, of God, through Him, and to Him are all things. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. What a great promise that is. And, you know, God has made these promises. And then it tells us in Hebrews 6.18, it is impossible for God to lie. So God has made a promise. He's made a covenant. Um, and he made it with Israel long ago. But he said, I'm not making this covenant just with those of you that are standing here, but also for those that are not here. And uh, then it went on to tell us that uh, God made this great promise to all the ends of the earth. Look unto me, all the ends of the earth. I'm God, I swear that unto me every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And it says... When it says all the ends of the earth, it says, look to me and be saved. God is promising to save all. It's God's promise. God is swearing this. And it's just great to know that these promises are in the scriptures. You know, when I look uh, back in this writing from Dr. Stephen Jones, he makes some very good points. You know, he says, many say that man has free will. But God does not. The devil can make you do things, but God cannot. Really? Is God really that helpless? Is man's will really stronger than God's will? Is there nothing God can do that would succeed in saving all mankind? Must we give God credit for trying or for having good intentions? Did he do all that he could, but in the end, do we have to admit that God was unable to fulfill his promise? Has God failed? That's the question that I would ask evangelical Christianity today. The God that is getting taught is a God that is a failure. Uh, those uh, from the camp of Armenianism, they say, well, God is love and God wants to save all, but he can't do it. He doesn't have the power to do it. And those from the Calvinism camp say, well, of course God is power. He's power and he's sovereignty, but he has what we call this limited atonement. He's limited uh, to only saving some and he never really cared to save everyone. Well, both of those views fall short of the glory of God, and they don't teach a God that's all-loving and all-powerful, and a God who has made these great promises to us as His people. So let's cherish these promises. Let's believe these promises that this is really what God is saying. Dr. Stephen Jones goes on to say here, Man was created in the image of God. His purpose was to have the same nature as God himself. But man sinned and brought death to the world. This is why we are all mortal. The law of God requires penalties for sin. So Jesus came to earth to die on the cross to pay for the sin of the whole world. One of Jesus' disciples, a man named John, also wrote in a letter that Jesus paid the penalty not only for the sins of believers, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's 1 John 2.2. 2. Further, Jesus said that if he were to die on the cross, he would draw everyone to himself. John 12.32. This is how he demonstrated his love for the world. He was willing to die even for his enemies before they knew him. So, closing with those two great scriptures, God is the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. 
And then remember again, Jesus said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. What a great God. Thank you, God, for these great promises. Yes, we believe.